Um, get excited about the momentum that you feel coming to the Valley. I want each of you as bankers to see that success, and the only way you're going to get there is to hear how other people have done it. Um, I've had the <coughs> opportunity to meet Chris through a mutual friend at a title company, and just when I heard him speak about how he's found success in the area, I got excited. I'm like, oh my gosh, I need you to get in front of my team and share what you've done. Chris is the top 1% in real estate producers in the area. Chris is new to the area, so I wanted you to hear that this isn't the good old boys club that came in and is doing the success. This is Chris creating his success. Chris is a golf pro. Um, I'm trying to think of all the things that we've talked through. Yes, so you saw the golf on there. That's Chris. Um, but I wanted you to hear what success came from. He's going to share with some, some statistics that was kind of an eye-opener for me this morning, too of what's happening in the Valley and how you guys can each get in front of that and make sure that you find success as well. So at this time, I'm gonna turn it over to Chris. Welcome, Chris. Hi, hi. Well, I can start out telling you that there's gonna be no role playing at all, it's none. So anyway, let me tell you a little bit about kind of myself and kind of where I came from. I'm, I'm from San Diego originally, and I uh, uh, lived there almost my entire life. Played college baseball in southern Idaho here in 1988 and 89, and then I ended up going back to, went to Arizona State for a while, bounced around to a bunch of colleges, never graduated, so you don't have to worry about that. But uh, I came up here, so I was in the golf business for 12 years, and when you look back at my career in the golf business and everything I did, I said, God, it kind of dried out and I kind of topped out because I don't really get paid very much money and I wanted to make money. So I kind of started thinking about what to do, and when I got into the real estate business, a friend of mine owned... Keller Williams, excuse me, Caldwell Banker in San Diego, specifically Rancho Bernardo. And he came to me and he said, hey, you should get into real estate. You should do it. You got the energy. You got the energy to do this thing and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I said, you know, everyone hates realtors. I go, you know, everyone hates car salesmen. Everyone hates this stuff. But he looked at it and he said, well, if you do it the right way and if you use marketing or if you use, you know, yourself, your personality, all that stuff, you really fit in and make a niche for yourself in the industry. So. I kind of took a whim and, and, I, and I went with it. And what I did was I said, I, I said to myself, I said, here's the deal. I looked at you know, loan officers and I looked at realtors and I looked at title people and everyone was kind of doing the same thing. And so I said, you know, how am I going to really make myself different? And what I ended up doing is I ended up hiring a marketing company and not telling everyone to go hire a marketing company. But I just said, if I'm going to do this thing, I want to make myself look so different and be way different than everybody else. So, what I did is I hired a company out of uh, Orange County called Hobbs Herder. I don't know if anyone's heard of it. Um, they've now moved on. They just do, have done real estate, historically have done real estate agents. But they have moved on now. I think they do doctors and they do LOs. They do banks or whatever now. But what they sp uh, specifically do is they try to different, you know, make you very different in your community. So what I did, I started out in San Diego and I knew I was moving. So I was spending all this money going, okay, what am I going to do if I'm moving? and I want to get my kids out of San Diego, what am I going to do to change myself again if I have to do it again? So what I did is I, I, I hired this company, and you guys can look at these. It's a, it's a personal brochure they created for me, and it just kind of tells you a life story about me in general and, and uh, just historically my life and kind of sell a personality connection with people. So when I go out to see somebody, if they see my marketing material already, they know who I am. So when they meet you, whether you're, and it's kind of funny because I don't look at it that way. I was just telling Tom, Tom and I were discussing this. It doesn't matter if you're a paper salesman or if you're LO or if you're entitled or whatever, but the thing about it is it's the attitude towards the sales portion of it is what I see. Because, you know, for example, in San Diego, I got, I mean, I, you can call it beginner's luck, whatever you want, but I, I started out in the business and I sold four houses in like a month. And they were all like a million, two million, nine million, seven way different market than here. Well, then I started freaking out about the move because my, you know, all, of, all of my professional friends are going, you're going from a market that's a million dollars to a market that's $200,000. And I said, well, cost of living is cheaper, which it's really not. And, the, the, and it's just, you know, those, all those factors, the mythical things, which we'll talk about a little bit in Idaho. Um, but the big thing was, it was my attitude. And so my attitude towards real estate, I remember going to our first call banker meeting and was sitting in there and the head person, I mean our head, so your Val, is sitting up there and all these realtors are there doing the, week, the weekly pitch on you know, properties and they had these properties popping up left and right. And the guy says, well, let's introduce any new realtors. And so they introduced me and the guy, goes, the guy goes, what a great time to get into real estate. And I'm just like, you seriously said that to me? You know, I'm brand new 
you're our manager and you're basically telling me it sucks, right? <laughs> so I'm just thinking, going, okay, different, 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 be different, be different, dynamic, whatever. So anyway, I made the move. When I made the move, I looked, we looked at Austin, we looked at, but we were just trying to get out of California. We, I, we have, I have four small kids and my wife. And we started looking at it. I found, I go, Boise, because I was in Twin Falls. I said, Boise, let's go check it out. So I came here, and I was walking around. I go, do I really want to do real estate? Do I really want to be in? So this is 2007. Anyway, so I stopped by a local bar in Eagle, and I'm uh, standing there talking to these guys. And I don't really know anybody, but I can just tell two realtors, two title guys, a bunch of builders. Everything's just about to implode, you know? And yeah, Tom. And, <laughs> and so we're sitting there, and I go, Okay, just sit back and watch these guys' attitude. And I remember the guy walking up. There was two realtors sitting there. You could just tell. And, and, <laughs> and these guys come in. One was a developer. I'll never forget it. He walked up and he sits down and he says, hey, guys, what's going on? How's real estate? And they're like, oh, man. And I'm like, this is going to be easy. <laughs> because it was just like, that's their attitude. So I start calling. And I remember we were staying at the Grove Hotel with my wife and we were looking for a house. And it was my brother, my, yeah, my older brother was with me. And we started calling from the Grove. People are paid to advertise in the Grove. And I started calling these numbers. I called four realtors. One never called me back. One called me back when I was back in San Diego. One called me back Sunday when I was in the airport. And the other one called me back about, I don't know, like eight hours later. And didn't even remember what I was calling for or whatever. And I'm going, okay, but these people are advertising and they're not returning their phone calls. I'm like, well, okay, there's two, right? So I go, attitude. Then two, and I go, and then seriously heavy marketing. So what I did is I said, okay, well, I'm, I'm talking to Hobbs Herter at the same time, Greg Herter, who owns the company, and who created all this stuff for me. And he says, look, our motto is connect, connect with success, is what they came up with for me. And it basis, basically not making it about real estate, not making it about loans. We made it more about a kind of like a connection with your client. So that was kind of what I, I thought. I look at these guys, and I said, you know, none of them no one's connecting with their clients at all. I mean, no one was doing any marketing. So I started asking my neighbors. I moved in. I kind of did nothing for about six months to a year. And I started asking all the people I met. I said, hey, will you say anything you get from a realtor? Anything at all in the mail. And after about six months, it was zero. And I'm thinking to myself going, oh my gosh. This is just a huge opportunity because everyone knows direct mail is expensive, but it's really powerful. And it works. And uh, so I started this campaign, and we just started kind of clicking along. And I remember I went to a, uh, his seminar in Orlando, and I just started marketing, and I'm about three pieces into direct mail, and I'm going, God, this is expensive. And I'm thinking to myself, who am I marketing to? And so I'm sitting there. I get off the plane. I have four messages. And one was Morgan Ryrie. I don't know if you know Morgan is from uh, Morgan. He, he's around still. But anyway, he, he, he's a builder, and he was a big builder. He had about 16 houses in the ground at the time, and he left me a message, hey, I got something in the mail from you, call me. So I don't even know who he is. He just said, he said, my name's Morgan, call me. So then another message from another lady, and she lived in San Francisco. So she was, it was non-owner occupied. She just had a rental in uh, Two Rivers. And then another message, another message, I'm going, that's crazy. So I start calling back, and I go, I'm back in town Monday, I'll come see you. I go to Morgan's office, and I don't even know who he is, no clue. And he says, you know what, I got your stuff. I love your marketing. This is really great. Tell me a little bit more about yourself. Kind of showed him my brochure. We talked about, you know, it's like, here's the toughest question. Here's another good one. Say, someone says, well, how long have you been in real estate? Well, how long have you been in banking? You know, no one wants to work with a newbie. And our comment was always with Joe Crown. The comment is, if someone says that someone who's brand new that's on our team, and they say that to you, you're like, God, it feels like forever. Right? <laughs> and it's, it's amazing. I thought it was a joke at first, because I, I, that's actually plagiarized. That it feels, it feels you know, when you say it, it sounds silly, but at the end of the day, when, you, when they say it, they never ask again. They just kind of blow over. It's amazing. We've used it so many times. Um, so back to what I was saying is Morgan lays this thing out on the table to me, and I go, what is this? And it was about 12 addresses. And I, have had, I didn't have a listing. I had not one listing, nothing. And he says, I want you to list these for me. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. I didn't have signs. I had nothing. And I'm like, okay. Great, go to the next, next meeting, list a house, next list, 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 list. And so we have, I was at Cole Baker at the time and there's a big board and they had blue for listing, red for pending, green for sold, whatever it was, right? And all, everyone's names up there. Within a week, 
I had the entire board full, they raced the next person, and then more. So I think at any time, I don't remember what, what the n number was, but I had over, I think I had over 40 listings, like that. And so I'm by myself, I'm running around freaking out. My wife's calling me, I'm at the office at 10 o'clock at night, and she's going, what are we, this isn't why we moved here. And I'm like, what am I gonna do? I created the animal, what am I gonna do now, right? So I'm just freaking out. Anyway, long story short was that whole connection thing with whether it's, whether it's that piece, you know, that made the click, but then it was the overlap, I think, of, in our, in our, our industry, industry, you know, we get leads certain ways. Direct mail, you can advertise, you can talk to your friends, sphere of influence. Sign calls are a big one for us. But for your industry, it's this, the small stuff. And I was telling, this is Linda Schlomer and Jerry Kelly, and they both, both work with me. But we talk about little small stuff like, like this stuff, personal handwritten notes. This one right here was written, and I brought it intentionally because it was going between, the guy, a guy had five listings out of San Francisco, and he wanted to sell them. And he called Jerry and I, and he said, hey, I want to talk to you guys. So we met, we ch chatted or whatever, and he said, you want to know what the defining moment was when, I cho when we chose you guys? Because it was like $2 million in listings, right? And he goes, the defining moment was when I was sitting in my house in, in California, in San Francisco, and I got the handwritten note from you. You were the only one that reached out, and, it was, and it's just silly to me. It just says, hey, just checking in with you, see how it's going. The market in Boise is doing extremely well. I know you want to sit down and talk about the properties. We love the opportunity. Boom, picked up, met him at Bardenay, signed all the paperwork. So it's the, it's the small stuff like that I think that we're all missing in this industry is the personalization. Because, I mean, don't you agree, Val? Absolutely. Well, you start talking about it, and no one's, and no one's touching their clients. You know? And I'm not here to tell you that I am the best at it, but at the end of the day, if, when you're doing this kind of stuff, it's just, I mean, how much of an impact has it been made for you guys? Huge. You know, we talk about it. So we talk about it, everyone goes, well, my life's a complete disaster. So I'm going over here taking a listing. I'm going over here working with a buyer. My kid's baseball game's over here. My, you know, all this stuff's going on in your life. But we talk about this big thing, and I, this didn't really come from me, because what I try to do is I try to take a little piece of everything we, we, we listen to and people we talk to and go, that works for us, you know? I'm not gonna dial for dollars. That's just not me. I mean, it, just, it, it burns my battery and I'm done and I don't wanna call nine million people and beg for business, right? Some people do. Kevin Hughes does it and they do extremely well. I mean, they have a boiling room, I guess. I have not been over there. But I heard they just dial. And it, you know what, of course, eventually someone's gonna say yes, right? But we talk about this thing and, and we really try hard to do it and, and Linda, so Linda's been with us about a year and a half, right? And Linda, you know, the first year it was just like, we weren't really sure, and I'm just like, you know what? What is the key thing for Linda? What's the key thing for Jerry? What's the key thing for Tom? Whoever it is. And the thing about it is, it's that time blocking. And we found that to be extremely successful and stick to it and hold each other accountable to it. And if you don't know what time blocking is, I don't know if you guys ever discussed this, and you and I discussed it at lunch, but time blocking for me is going, okay, what am I, what's Chris best at? Is Chris best at calling people on the phone, but that's not it. But it's Chris, I'm really good about being in front of people and I like being in front of people and I like talking about real estate, okay? And about how, you know, just, it's that positive momentum that, that I think gets people to the, you know, gets them to sign. So they go, you know, they're hearing bad news, bad news, bad news, bad news. You know, hyperinflation's coming up, rates are going up, they're going over five, whatever, like sky's falling. But then they hear the voice of reason and reality, and I'll show you the numbers here in a second. But it gets them to where they're like, on to you, because people don't want to, they want to work with people that are going, hey, I'm pumped to sell real estate. I'm pumped to do your loan. This is what I do full time. I'm not a, you know, I'm not a store clerk and a realtor. So when you call me, you're going to have support. You're going to get people to call, go, you know what, this person, they take it serious. And it's huge, because I think it's a little bit subliminal where they don't even realize it, but they're gravitated towards that. So that positive energy, People love it. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. It's infectious. You know, and here's another one. And I don't mean to jump around on you, but it's, here's another one. I was at a party. I stand there, don't know anybody, of course. My neighbor invited me. And these two guys are t talking about real estate, about real estate. And there's two real estate agents who you both know. I have in this room, you guys know who they are. And they're sitting there, and these guys are talking about selling their house. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Like, no one's even paying attention, right? So I'm standing there, and I'm just kind of like, Hey, just started chatting with them, you know? But the thing about it is it, it's the being, being there, you know, you don't have to do it all the time. Like my wife, it drives my wife nuts. Because if we go anywhere, I, you, we could be at Bardenay, we could be 
McDonald's. If someone opens their mouth about real estate, I'm like, <laughs> well, I just get in there and I'm like, you know what, it's opportunity. And the way I look at it is someone's gonna get that listing, someone's gonna get that buyer, someone's gonna get it, might as well be me. Might as well be our team, you know? So the point is that I think that if you look at it, going back to the time blocking thing, is if you time block, let's just say you wake up in the morning, whatever you do, you get your kids to school, whatever, whatever it is that you, everyone has a different life, but you go, okay, I'm extremely good at with my clients on the phone. Take, if you have a, you have a database of let's say 100, take 10 a day and start at the top and go to the bottom and go 10, 10, 10, 10, right? So we got 50 down that first week, next week got 50. Call them and just, and it, I don't know, people don't like to call them. People, I hate email, just so you know. I mean, I think email, anyone, calling, t calling talking to people or taking them to lunch, I know it can get expensive. Don't take them to lunch, take them to coffee. But they get that one-on-one, -on -one. no one's doing the eye connection thing anymore and no one's talking to people. They, they aren't, they're like this. Everyone's texting back and forth. I mean, I guarantee you someone in this room is texting somebody else right now. But it, it, it just, it, it's just habit forming and you, you do this and so you look at it and, and the eye contact and being in touch with people is so important. And you know, so back to the time blocking portion of it is, time blocking is you shutting everything off. I don't care if it's your cell phone, I don't care if it's your email, I don't care what it is, you shut it off, you're done. You're gonna go, you know what, for this, for these four hours, on Monday morning, no, Monday's not good, Tuesday morning, you go, I'm gonna do this activity. And if you do that, you guys would be floored at the results you'd get. I mean, you just would, because you're not going, making one phone call, or turning an email, you're focusing on that one thing. And so when you focus on that one thing, it's so powerful because the fact of the matter is, the compound numbers of that it's, it's just amazing because <coughs> everybody else is emailing them. Everybody else is emailing them the flyer of the week or... Recipe card. Yeah, recipe card. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but so does anyone need here? Does anyone time block in here? A couple of people. I mean, it's amazing. But it's amazing. And the thing about it is I think it's even better. We talk about it all the time. Team up. Team up with somebody and make that person accountable and just get together once a week and go, hey, you, t you told me last week that you were going to call, um, you know, Chris Loftus, you were going to call Dave Callis, you were going to, right? So this hit list. And you go, did you? And you're like, yeah, no, I called and Chris, but he didn't answer. I didn't leave a message for him. You're like, really? Or you didn't, whatever. It, just these activities, my thing is when you stick with them, it's amazing that the results you will get is unreal. And again, I'm not perfect at it. I find myself going weeks sometimes without time blocking. And you know, I just have a, everyone's got a different way of getting business, okay? And so the thing about it is getting the business, like I said before, I'm great at doing this kind of stuff. I love talking to you. I, go, I would talk to each and every one of you all day to day about real estate, because I'm really passionate about it, and I think that it's being done the wrong way. I mean, I, I really do. I think that when you take, how can I come in here, okay? I didn't know one person in 2007, and I moved here, and I've been in the top 1% producing real, real estate companies, now we're a team, but real estate, a agents, there was like 5,000 agents. And how is that possible? I can really don't know a soul and come over and take over a market share like that. And it was just a different way of doing it. And, it, and it's, it's, it's funny, it's funny because you talk to people and they're like, oh, I just got lucky. And I'm like, no, I was in my office and I, not now, I don't, I, don't, I don't work, you know, I'm not working my fingers to the bone. I coach all my kids, teens and everything like that, but I have help. And we have a team now, but I guess that, you know, the biggest portion of it is back to the attitude portion of it, like you and I were discussing, right? I don't care if it's paper, I don't care what it is. If you, someone walks up to you and you're having a bad day, fake it. Just go, someone goes, hey, how are, how's, how's the, my friends called me a hard optimist. They go, well, oh, we gotta talk about real estate again. Here he comes, you know? But it's like, how's real estate? Great, right? Someone goes, well, God, last year was really rough. Not for us, it was a record year. Well, it wasn't, we were off by, 350,000, but it still was a record. You know, we didn't do the exact same number. It's that kind of attitude, I think, that makes people flip and switch and go, you know what? I'm not going to go with Guild. I'm going to go with Key because not just is, does, does Tom have a good attitude about it, even though I'm not working with Tom, Val's got a good attitude about it. The whole group's got a good attitude about it. So when you're out in the community and you're talking to people, it's this aura of, you know, I want to be around them. You know, they're doing something really successful. And if they're doing something successful and working at such a high level, that's what people want to be around, you know? So I guess, I guess in, in a nutshell, we discussed this, but it's a really, the, the thing is, A, it's about our clients. 
We know that. We've got to make it about the clients. The second thing is I really, really feel like the time blocking thing is such a huge deal. You know, uh, clients, time blocking, the attitude is a gigantic deal. And the other thing is knowing the numbers. And this is kind of what I want to look at now. And I think that if you asked anyone in our industry about these numbers, so hopefully you can see them. You've got them on your desk too. But we just talk about kind of like this, like the overview of the last seven years, the rise and fall of the California dream investment. Guess what? It's back. There, like Jack Val said, I'm telling you right now, there's not one person in my neighborhood that's from Boise. Not one. And we sell 70%. At least. 70%. Your 85. 85% of the buyers are from California. She has two in us. We're right now from California. And so they're coming again. And they're seeing the value of the numbers. And you can see here, so if you look, you know, the, the investment opportunity thing dried up really for about the last nine months. I don't know if you guys have felt it, but it really did. And all of a sudden this weekend, light switch turned on, we got phone calls. People want to buy, can you find me five houses? That kind of stuff. Because they can't find them in other markets anymore. It's just done, right? So what are they looking here? We talk about the run-up and the crash of the market. Same thing's happening again, you guys. And I'm not here, I'm all pumped about real estate, right? But here's the deal. I'm also realistic in my head going, okay, what's gonna happen tomorrow? You know, for example, to, we'll show you through here. Everyone's been bugging me for the last 18 months to get into new construction. And I'm like, no. Nope, 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 that's not what we do. We did a little bit, like we did the waterfront district down there, and a couple other ones here and there, but here, and here's the reasoning behind this, and you guys can take it however you want, but for me, I looked at it and said this way, I go, okay. I sit down and talk to these two, and I said, well, here's the deal, if we take on new construction, okay, let's say Hunter Homes or whatever you, what, whoever it is, James Clyde, they own you. I mean, they, you, you're their puppet. And if you aren't, they fire you. I mean, I watch builders go through real estate. I mean, I've had phone calls, people go, God, hey, Chris, I just ran into so-and-so, and I go, what a great opportunity, he wants to meet you. And I said, I'm not interested. It's politely not interested, but I'm not interested. That's not what we do. We do some, we'll do build jobs, we'll do some new construction, smaller builders, that kind of stuff. 